All right, guys. So uh, we are going to get into mixing drums with isotope plugins today. Just like a couple of a couple of quick tips, not really going crazy in depth. Just a couple of tricks that I like to use. Um, we're mostly going to be focusing on Neutron. Um, if you uh, if you you can get it on Splice, uh, I recommend getting the Neutron Advanced bundle uh, or the Ozone Advanced bundle that gives you Ozone advanced and uh neutron advanced um and you can get all of these individual things including the tonal balance control which is awesome anyways let's get into it so first thing uh we'll focus on is just uh adjusting the gain a lot of times you can fix mix issues in your track just by increasing the gain on something so let's focus on the kick here let's just bump that up 2 db Remember, when you're mixing, try to focus on the adjusting the volume before you do anything else. A lot of times, your samples that you're using are already sounding really good as, uh, to start with, and that's awesome because, I mean, we live in a time now where you could get already processed samples that sound amazing to sort of mess with those and sort of shape them differently before you try just adjusting the volume. It's, uh, it could be a detrimental to your sound, so... That's something to keep in mind. Um, you try try using the volume before using anything else. So the next thing we'll do, we'll jump to, is uh, the is some compression. So right here on the snare, I have a uh, Neutron two, and we'll uh, we'll jump right into it. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start compressing the snare, um, and then I'm going to um, I'm gonna add the gain back into it because when we compress it. Uh, it's essentially just bringing the volume down uh, level to the uh, to the lower volumes of the sample. So, so we'll, we'll just we'll just work on it. I'll show you. Mind you, I got this on the snare group. So I'm going to bring this attack down a little bit and the release down. Switch it to peak here. So without it. It can make them a little bit bigger and a little bit more round. Um, um, which is good for some stairs. In this case, it, it works. It works a little bit better than the original stairs. A little bit too snappy, so we kind of just brought those down, just uh, uh, squashed them just a little bit, and it made for a better snare. So, uh, next one we could do is transient control. So we'll um, we'll jump down here to the hi hats. Right now they're kind of sounding a little soft, so we can uh, we could jump in here. And bump that attack up a little bit. Without it. a subtle difference but the uh the, the main idea is we're getting that we're bumping that transient up a little bit and bringing down the decay of that so it'll be sharper on the attack but it it won't sustain very long so it's different than just turning it up it'll uh it's it, it just gives it a little bit sharper attack which is what we're looking for so the next thing 
is we will get into uh, masking. So uh, right here we can uh, we the, we could hear our our snare has a little bit of low frequency in it. So I'm gonna focus right here on this part where the sub is going, and I'm going to uh, yeah we're just gonna try and and duck out those lower frequencies in the snare that are also in the sub or some, maybe some high frequencies that are in the sub that are also in the snare. So let's uh, let's take a look at this one. We'll pop this open right here. And we'll hit masking right here. And we'll come down to, wait a minute. Let's make sure we have our EQ on, on the snare. We do. Let's just name this snare, just like that. We could just hit masking, then go to sub. There we go. So right now you can see there's no, there's nothing popping up here. That's because we have our sensitivity. It's not all the way up. So we're going to turn the sensitivity all the way up. All right, Joe, we're not going to turn it all the way up. We'll just turn it almost all the way up. Seems like we're getting a little bit of crossover right here. So we could probably actually just roll off all of this right here. Just like that. And so right here where we cut, we can also boost right here. You can also turn on the inverse link. If you pull this down, that will come up the same amount. But we don't want it to be that crazy. We just want it a little bit, so we'll turn that one off there. Makes it a little bit tighter. So that is certainly beneficial. It works a lot better when you're uh, not working with necessarily just your drums, but when you're working with uh, synths. Synths tend to uh, cover each other up quite a bit. So, or if you're working with a synth that occupies a lot of frequency space. And you like trying to get your snare to stick out a little bit more. That's a really great tool to um, to balance your synths with your snares and the rest of your drums. So uh, let's jump into the next part, which is uh, mono. So uh, what you may not have known is that you can turn on uh, mono, sum to mono button right here to make uh, certain drums in your mix mono, which. Uh, is really beneficial if you're trying to save on the uh, stereo width. Sometimes, uh, if your if your track is too wide, it's you start encountering some phase issues, and it um, it in turn harms your mix. So, just try and uh, j try out the the mono button, and we can we can see what uh, what it sounds like. Let's check it out. <laughs> You can hear them uh, making our stairs mono wasn't it wasn't really detrimental to our mix. So if there was any phasing issues going on with our snare, we can completely eliminate that, and the snare still sounds centered and right in uh, right uh, right down the middle of the mix, which is great. So the next uh, the next thing we could do is uh, we'll we'll just work with the snare only here. Let's go back down here. Where is it at? Where is it at? Right here. Okay. So. Uh, if I want to get this snare to stick out a little bit more in the mix, what I like to do is go to the lowest fundamental. And what I mean by fundamental is that there's usually a tone in every snare that you could that you can identify using the spectrum analyzer. And it looks like it's right here, like at 300 hertz. So I'm going to grab this. Uh, actually, we can make a new node right here, number two. And I'm gonna boost this up. I'm gonna boost it up right where the fundamental is. Let's let's watch. You 
you hear that difference? Kind of sticks out just a little bit more. And we could probably dial it back just a little bit, but this is a this is a really great tool for um, if you're trying if your snares are sounding really thin, you can uh, you can add a lot of body and character to them just by just by doing that one simple little trick. It's awesome. I do this quite frequently with in my my mixes and my tracks. So next thing we could do is we uh, we'll uh, we'll start we'll do some panning using the uh, using neutron. So let's. Uh, Grab a neutron. We'll we'll pan the uh, the symbols to the left a little bit. So we'll, the symbol crashes right here. We'll pan them to the left, and we'll grab the hi hats and we'll pan those to the right. So earlier when we were talking about making the snare mono to have it sit right in the middle, well, with these guys we're panning them off to the left and right so we can make the the track sound a little bit more three dimensional and uh and in turn give each drum element its own space so we have the kick and the snare those are usually sitting right in the middle but uh, all the other stuff we add in there we could pan those to the left and in the right and make them sound uh make them sound like they're all over the room uh kind of immerse the listener in the experience so uh that's what it sounds like with the hi hats pan to the right and the uh the cymbals pan to the left probably dial that back a little bit And you don't really notice it a whole lot. I mean, if you've got if you got headphones on, you might notice it a little bit more. But uh, it, it, in the long run, when you're uh, at the end of the at the end phase, when you're boosting everything and uh, you know running running your track through your limiters and stuff, making it loud, this will be uh, this will be a great great tool for uh, for you to maximize loudness. So it's a really uh, really handy tool. So right up here, we're going to focus on the kick a little bit now. So I have two uh, Neutron EQs here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the phase on them. So I've like uh, this is a track I was already working on, uh, but the uh, so I've already checked the phase. But this is something you could do. So in uh, in audio, there's something called phase cancellation, and that's what what happens is when you're uh, you've got if you watch my other video on this, uh, I mean you already know what's what I'm about to say right now. But uh, these peaks and valleys. When they don't match up, in fact, they're in the inverse relationship. They will; uh, those frequencies will cancel each other out, and it'll sound uh, much different than uh, and much worse if you're trying to get power out of your kicks by layering them. It, uh, it'll kind of damage your kicks. So you could check this by uh, hitting this phase cancellation button right here. So we'll just loop this right here, just like that. Hear all that, all that power that disappears. That's something that you could do. This is a really handy tool just to just to check. You know, like you might have layered your drums and you thought they sounded great, but then uh, you hit the phase inversion uh, button right here, and it invo inverts the polarity. You can see right there, uh, and that little help line underneath my mouse there. Um, uh, you'll you notice like wow I, I I was missing so much power out of like out of these drums so it's a great button to uh, to utilize. Uh, the next thing we will uh, focus on is we'll we'll grab the kick group here. Matter of fact, we're gonna grab an exciter right here. So this is a, a nice tool to add a little bit more um, tone to your uh, your drums, your kick drums specifically. Sounds like retro is giving us the most noticeable effect. So let's listen in the mix. Okay. 
So for this for this track, the uh, the uh, more distortion we get is it's kind of taming those uh, those transients. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on this band right here and only focus on the low end. So we get that snap from the tr the top transient, but we can still keep that bottom uh, that bottom frequency space a little bit more distorted. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that. I, I these uh, uh, this technique works really great if you're trying to make that lo-fi hip hop sound. Uh, doing this with your kicks is a great uh, great technique. And that's about it for the uh, these tips, guys. So I um, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned a lot, and I hope your drums are gonna sound better by the end of the day. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.